the things we do for amateur radio. So we're currently halfway up a mountain carrying a whole heap of stuff, pack of equipment, because we're fixing an FM radio transmitter, a community FM uh, station that's been down for what, quite a few years? Quite some time. So we decided to get keen and try and fix it. And uh, this is part A of trying to fix it. Yesterday we actually started, we went to the studio and had to look at an antenna that is the link, sends the audio from the studio up to this mountain. And uh, the antenna had a fault. So what we'll do is we'll go through back to yesterday and uh, show you what we did at the studio and then you can join us back here for the next part of getting to the other end to try and fix it. 3.8 or 3.6 to 1 and your return loss is minus 5 dB. So yeah, it's no good. It's no good. Well, further up the band, it starts to drop off quite a bit at 860 megs, but even then it's still not much good. It's 1.7, so that's just a reflection, I think, of the cable length. So I think the next test that we need to do is we need to go and put a load at the other end and then see if it's the cable. And then if it's not the cable, then what we'll do is we'll um, look at the antennas. Now we need a load. Do you want a shifter? Shifter. Here it is. Do you want to two shifters? Thank you. <laughs> Together they have to drop the towel whenever you go to the top. Oh, this is a nice towel to play. Oh, go all, go all the way to the top then. <laughs> no, check, check all the bays. <laughs> Oh, I just saw, yeah, I just saw that. Watch your shin on that one too. Could have been much easier. What was that? What was that logic? So they could have mounted these off the roof. Yes. Right, so that's off. Go for it. <laughs> I'm recording. So we plugged in the uh, the load up the end of the coax. So it's a 50 ohm load. And on here, it's now showing minus 26 uh, dB of return loss at 8.47, which is the STL Happy days. And our SWR is 1.1. So we know that the coax is good. So it's more than likely. My feeling is I think that there's water in the phasing hose. So now we've got to go back up. We've got to start undoing antennas, take this with us, undo antennas, plug this in and see if we can figure out which antenna is actually the bad one. Or if all of them are bad. No, she cooked. Cooked. She cooked. No water, that's good. Let's test the bottom bay. What's the bet? It was the power divider for the top bay and the bottom bay. That one? Yeah. Well, we can test that inside the shed. So if I take that off, because you're not worried about putting this back in, uh. and then I'll seal up whichever one we don't use, and then we can take that power divider down and we can test it. I don't particularly like climbing. Sometimes you just got to get it done. For the love of it. For the love of radio. I don't know how those blokes do it though, up the top. Oh. 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 Yeah, she opened circuit. Is it? She opened circuit. So what I propose, move to the bottom array Yep. So we'll 
plug the bottom array in and then leave it as is. Have you had any success, Rachi? We have. VSWR returning pretty much zero, zero uh, reflections now. So we're on the bottom bay. Yes, we are. And hopefully, with any luck, we can hear it on the mountain tomorrow. That will be the special question. So what we do is, so this power divider, what it does is hear your transmitter comes up here and into the power divider and then it divides the power equally between these two ports yep so what this is looking for is these are these are critical lengths and they're designed for um, 50 ohm antennas on each end so what we do is to test this we'll just put in a 50 ohm load on one port we'll see look there's a line there now, which is we've got we've got an open on one side and we've got 50 ohms on the other. And we're looking about 2.1 SWR. So now if we put another 50 ohm load on. Yeah. And look at that. So now what we're looking at here is we've got 32 dB of return loss with a 1.049 SWR. So that power divider is perfect. Excellent. The issue that we had was the other one of these that was up on top of the mountain. Oh, top of the mountain. Top of the, top, mountain. Top of the tower. On the top bay or the top array, exactly the same thing, except when I put the meter on to test it, it was showing an open circuit. Right? So we can actually simulate this here. So if we took out, if it was one antenna that was bad, this is what we would see. We would see something like that. So as you can see there, that there's a little bit of return loss minus four dB and the SWR rolls off here at the end. But that's not what I was seeing. I was seeing this, where it was absolutely flat as a ah. tap. So that would mean that either there's a break in both antennas on there, so that both antennas are not connected to the power divider anymore, or there's an internal break in here, probably water's yep. filled up in here or in here, or in here, water's filled up and um, the antenna's got a problem. So. The good news is though, is we're back running now on those bottom two antennas, which are still good. And we're gonna go, we'll go inside now and we'll sweep the antenna inside. Double check. And double check and see what it looks like. Lovely. You're a wizard. The wizard of RF. That's for you. Thank you. Okay. Let's do a sweep. Oh yeah, I left that one finger tight for you. <laughs> okay, so this is what it looks like. So it's not perfect. So it's not perfect. There's a, a couple of little wavy bits, and as we move the marker along, you'll see the frequency moves along. Oh yeah. So what are we? What eight forty-seven? So let's let's just go up. So the lowest here, it dips. It's dipping down here about one point one at eight fifty-six megs. Yep. And about 867, 1.1. So as we move our marker up a little bit higher, so the, oop, the center is 847, which is our frequency. Yep. That we want. Uh, 847, wasn't it? Yep. So 847 almost sits in a dip, but it's a little bit higher. 1.4, which is, it's fine. 1.4 is okay. It's better than, what was it? What? Yeah, it was bad. Yeah. What are we testing? So at the moment, we're in a very high broadcast environment, so we've got quite a lot of weird artifacts going on on the Nano VNA. There is a folded dipole on the roof, which is a backup antenna, so we decided to sweep that to see what it looks like. So here we've got a span from 88 megahertz all the way to 108 megahertz. So I'm looking at the entire band here, which is essentially what that antenna is for. So SWR here, top 1.2 at 104.9, minus 20 dB return loss. So we operate here on 105.3. So we're sort of around here. Um, I can't go right on frequency because it won't measure properly because we've got a kilowatt above us. Yeah, two actually. But it's about 1.2, 1 1.3 1 to one. So 
the backup antenna will is still good, looks good, sweeps good. Um, down at 98.1, which is the transmitter that we're going to try and fix tomorrow. It's one point. It's one to one. It's yep. minus 23 dB. So, um, so the the backup antenna on the roof is is good to go. So. And the other service here is 103.7. So that's pretty close as well. Yep. And what would be interesting too is you find a lot of broadcast sites because there's so much power coming down the stick. If you actually put a power meter on this on a spectrum analyzer, sometimes you can measure milliwatts coming back feed. Back, back feed. From an antenna that's right up on top of the tower to an antenna that's lower down, you could still get milliwatts of uh, power. And then the problem is, is that when you plug this in to a receiver, so for instance, we do a lot of amateur radio repeaters. When we plug this into our amateur radio receiver, we get um, uh, blocking, we get descent because of so much power coming down. So that's why we have to put them into filters that are sort of similar to this. These are Slightly different, but we need to put in bandpass filters to effectively notch out these two transmitters and, and get rid of all that power coming down. So that's rather interesting too. But that backup antenna is good to go. I don't know where it goes. <laughs> there. So, <yeah. laughs> that is the official holding spot. It's there. I'm recording. All right. So those two Yagis that we spoke about that we swept, they go into this, which is a link transmitter. So this is a studio link transmitter on 847 megahertz that transmits to the big transmitter which is up on the hill so there's up there there's a receiver pulls the um, program out or the audio that we're sending to it and then transmits it on 98.1 megahertz so the problem that we had was is that those antennas were uh, detuned because we had a fault I think in the power divider the top power divider so now we're going to the, into the bottom one and you can see here that we've got forward power is at 100% now. And if we go to reverse power, we've got pretty much nothing. So that's indicating that we've got no, uh, no SW, well, low SWR. So hopefully now we're broadcasting out and uh, we go to the mountain tomorrow, which is going to be, I guess, later on in this video <laughs> and see if we have any success. So that was part A. Now, if you want to watch part B, the next video will appear in trying to fix this antenna. So we're halfway up the mountain. Come and join us in the next video.